This week on What's Good Cape Cod, we're at the Captain David Kelly House. And that's all I'm going to tell you for now. <laughs> I'm Sarah Lapsey Martin. And I'm Katie Clancy. And welcome to What's Good Cape Cod, where every week we show you Cape Cod through the eyes of a couple of locals. Each week we feature a person, place, and thing we think you should know about. And this week, like Sarah said, it's the Captain David Kelly House. And that's all we're going to tell you for now. Yeah, so exciting. <laughs> when the storm is due. Are you ready? Here we go. Here with Rick and Tom, and we have had so much fun already, um, but we have lots and lots of questions for you guys. So let's get started. All right, right, right. Yes. all right, Sarah. So now you guys are not originally from the Cape. No. Where did you start out? I was born in Marlboro, Massachusetts, yep. and I was from a little rural town in upstate New York called Lowellville, dairy country. I think I would love to know how you two met. Okay. You want to check that one? Sure. <laughs> I was I was uh, going to art school in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And I vacationed on the Cape in Provincetown, and Tom was living in Boston. He was on vacation. Our paths crossed, and he asked me to dance, and this was in 1986, Six. 35 years ago, Memorial Day weekend. And that, the fact that I said yes changed my life. Aww. We've been together 35 Aww. years. Look at yeah. that story. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so... So you met and then you opened a, an inn? What happened? I know, what right? Happened? <laughs> what yeah. happened in between? How did the inn come about? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we were both working our professional jobs for 20 something years. Um, and we both dreamed of, of owning a B&B for probably 20 of those years before we actually acted on it. Um, it seemed like a retirement thing to us. And then the more we thought about it, it seemed more like we need to have energy to do that. It's not something for our old age, it's something for like while we have the energy to do it. And we were ready to move on. And ready to move on. We were yes. both stuck in, stuck in like cubicles or rooms with no windows and, and uh, we needed we needed a change. We both had that creative like spirit that we needed to, uh, to express. Yeah. And um, so we started looking for real estate for three years um, and it wasn't until we saw a picture of this house that it spoke to us both. Uh, the house was in disrepair. It needed a lot of help but we could see the potential in it we had no idea where Centerville was <laughs> at all and we took a drive down from Walpole and found it one day and we fell in love with it and five months later we sealed the deal it was a five-month negotiation it was for, for sale, sale by, by owner, owner. and uh, it was a difficult transaction but we stuck with it and we felt like we were supposed to be here so scones aren't your only gig this is you know you're not scones 24 7 no no because we follow you on social yes. and you guys are kind of buff Tell us, <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. that. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> um, well, fitness kind of became part of our lifestyle once we bought the inn. We were not fitness freaks before that. Um, I was. Okay, <laughs> maybe Tom. <don't. laughs> Sorry. Um, it became a thing because we had the t a little bit more of the time now. We weren't spending an hour and a half commuting each way. Uh, we weren't in a job that we didn't like anymore. And we have a gym right down the street. So we both started getting into working out and Center, Centerville Fitness at Centerville Fitness right <laughs> and then I took a Zumba class um, I had no idea what I was doing and I did not ever want to do it again because <laughs> I felt embarrassed and the instructor who was a very good friend gave me a 10 class card to come back and I did and she kept pushing me closer to the front of the room every time I would come to class until finally she announced to the class that I was going to lead this number. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and short of having a heart attack, I, I led the number for 20 people and I kind of fell in love with it. And so once I left my professional job, I thought maybe I should try being a Zumba instructor. And so for seven years now, I've been teaching Zumba in different health clubs and outdoor classes. And I'll be teaching in Hyannis um, starting July 6th for the summer on Tuesdays. No. So that's great. So we get we've got like a good idea of what you guys who you guys are a little bit. I'm sure there's a lot more to know, but we want to move on to this place. You told us a little bit about it took it was a five month negotiation. Mm -hmm. It needed work, but what is the Captain David Kelly House? 
1835 Greek Revival house built by Captain David Kelly. He raised his family here. He, his wife, and all but two of the children are buried here at the Congregational Church. And uh, the previous owners got, did the paperwork in the process to get us on the, uh, what am I saying? The National Register National of Historic, Historic Places. Historic places. Yeah. And uh, so it's six rental units, all with private bath and all the amenities that people expect, plus breakfast. And uh, within walking distance of the Historic Museum, the Country Store, Craigville Beach, Four Seas Ice Cream, three miles from the ferries to the islands. It's a great location. Yeah, playground it, across the street. Playground, right. yeah. I have trouble keeping Rick out of the playground. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta work. I, I like the swing set. Yeah. <laughs> um, but also it has a history as a lodging house since the 1930s. Um, it became Robin's Nest in the 1930s as a lodging house, not a bed and breakfast, but one bathroom for everyone to share, um, no meals included, and through time it was under different names like the Terrace Gardens and Adams Terrace Gardens and uh, when we bought it, it had already been changed to the Captain David Kelly house, um, but it had been kind of left neglected. Um, so we spent a lot of time upgrading amenities. It's such a beautiful property here. Thank you, thank you, yeah. So let's talk about the Stone Wars. Like when we, when Sarah, Sarah had this idea to come here, she's like, oh my gosh, I've been to this place. It's so great. And they come out and there's a war. And I'm like, what? And no one, it, it's, a, it's a true hidden gem. And once you're here, you can't wait to bring other people back and just <laughs> tell everyone you know about yeah, it. Yeah, without a doubt. So so how did the scones hap start? How did the scone wars happen? Tell us a little history Would you there. like to tell them how the scones started before the end? Uh, I brought a little cookbook, all of scone recipes. And I was making blueberry scones, and everybody loved them. Everybody loved them. And my my siblings and <laughs> everyone was <laughs> coming for Thanksgiving one year. And this is when we were in Walpole. And I couldn't find fresh blueberries, so I bought frozen blueberries, put them in a colander overnight, drained out the liquid, made the scones. At that point, we we uh, baked on a, a pampered chef stone, and the thing became like a big blueberry pancake because it was still too much liquid in the frozen berries. And I swore I would never bake again. So he starts baking, and everyone's going, "What well, wonderful blueberry scones!" And I'm going, "But I bought the book. I should be getting the credit." So that was long before yeah. we owned the B and B. Yeah. So then he started making scones again, um, and we both had our favorite traditional shape. Mine is triangular, his is round and pointless. It's all bland and dry. <laughs> so we stuck with the triangular shape and the round shape. A totally separate recipes. Yeah. Totally so there we were, we made scones, but we didn't think of it as a thing for the B&B. It was just uh, once in a while they'd get a scone, once in a while they'd have a bread or a muffin. People started really complimenting my scones. And so we thought maybe <laughs> we should have a competition of the scone. And it was simply about presenting the better scone and, and asking the guests for their opinion. And sometimes I'd say, you know, I know you're, you're worried about voting and hurting someone's feelings, so I want you to know that I've already filled out the ballots. <laughs> and I wrote Rick's name on every, on every ballot, and I waited at least 20 minutes. And I crossed out his name and wrote my name. <laughs> and they felt so relieved. I'm just going to let you tell your story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, man. So that's that, um, How did you go from just serving scones to... <laughs> A flamingo on your head. Right? Can I? Can I? Yes, you may. I have to give Tom all of the credit for the outrageous deliveries of the scones because I was not comfortable doing that in front of guests. I was not comfortable getting into a costume to deliver a scone. One Sunday, Tom didn't even tell me. He put a crown on, a, a, a tablecloth, a red tablecloth, played a very loud classical piece of music and came out and had everybody's attention at this loud music and presented his scones like the gift of the Magi. Gloria in Excelsis Deo was the song. <laughs> so I'm in the background in horror. I'm thinking, these big guests are here tomorrow. They're going to want me to do something. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I was nauseous about it. And so I went to the joke shop and started looking at like costumes and I got a children's Lone Ranger outfit. <laughs> and I wore it to the theme of the Lone Ranger and came galloping out as the Scone Ranger. <laughs> oh, God. Which they loved, right? <laughs> and I was Tom Toe. Yes, I got him a, a little headdress with one feather. <laughs> so then we started thinking, okay, you're going to be a supporting actor for, for me. I'm going to be a supporting actor for you. When you. So the next day he had to come up with one because the guests were still here. They were staying like four nights. Oh, wow. right? And they suddenly we built this thing that they were expecting a new character. So I went in the closet. I put on these high black rubber boots, a pith helmet, a canteen, a leather jacket, a Bible, a British flag, a stethoscope, and, and he said, became 
the scone ring. I mean, he became Dr. Living Scone. Dr. <laughs> Living Scone for the deepest, darkest, darkest, deepest heart of Africa with an ancient cannibal scone <laughs> recipe. So it was kind of like, ha, okay, now it's up to you for tomorrow. Yeah. And so it just was like a momentum. And most of it was with stuff we had. And, and we weren't like, we didn't have costumes. So we just right. kind of well, made fast things. fast forward to today, oh, yeah. you have yeah. so many costumes. Yeah. So. What are your favorite costumes that you guys have? Hmm. I have to say, I get a lot of joy out of coming out as a 1960s stewardess <laughs> named Sandy Scones, <laughs> and Tom is the pilot. The drunk pilot. Yeah, he's my supporting actor. Stone the drunk Air. Pilot. And it's an economy airline, yeah. and I have outrageously priced snacks in the box for everybody, which are my scones. Clothes line is the seatbelts. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's all economy. But he also um, does Britney Scones. Britney oh, Scones yeah. is a lot of fun. Because Oops, I did it again. Yeah. He I burned the, the best scone. Yeah. No. <laughs> Oscone. Uh, Oscone Powers, we yeah. did yesterday. Yeah. It, and um, so that's one, two, three, four. Frank, Frank Sconatra is one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, I think you do Elton Scone sometimes. Elton Scone at the piano. Yeah. yeah. And that's what's so fun is people can come back and come back again and always see something different. Right. We each have about 15 Persconas. Yeah, our Persconas. alter egos we call Persconas. <laughs> of course you do. And this uh, I'm a French. Scone. Oh, Elvis. Yeah. Pel Pelvis, Pelvis Sconely. Sconely. Yeah, he's a distant cousin of Elvis. And I'm a famous uh, French baker who has been run out of Paris because I bake scones instead of croissants. And Jean-Claude Jean Pierre Extraordinaire. <laughs> oh my God. To name a few. Right. All right, so, so what else, Sarah? So this has been so fun. Is there anything else you would love us to know about Captain David Kelly House or the Scone Wars? During COVID, we did bake and mail out 40 dozen scones. So people can order scones. It all depends upon how crazy it is. This summer is going to be our best summer ever. I think the month of August we have five nights really here nice and there available. available. Wow. We've never been so busy. We're so happy for you. That's wow. Oh, thank you. Because last year was horrible. Yeah. We're yeah. so glad you made it. Yeah. Really thank so you. glad you made it. Too. Thank you. Yeah. It was a dark time for so many people. Yeah. So especially during the off season where we're more available and have the time uh, to bake and fill orders for people if they want. Well, I think that's important for people to know that this is a year-round gig. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, like, the locals can really enjoy you in the off-season. Yes, we are open off, uh, all year long, and in the wintertime we serve breakfast indoors. We convert our space into a restaurant each morning and back into a living room lounge in the afternoon. Yeah. They can eat in front of the fire. They can eat in front of the Christmas tree. Um, and, uh, you know, except for two breaks a year that we take, uh, we're open. Well-deserved. Well-deserved. Yeah. yeah, we're glad you do that. So if someone wants to come and enjoy the experience, come stay at the inn, where can they find you? Um, they can find us at cdkhouse.com, which mm -hmm. is our website. Um, they can look at us on TripAdvisor, which um, we're right now number three out of 214 Correct. b and on Yay. Cape Cod. Yeah. Um, they can find us. Um, now I'm well, they, you can call, they can call us. Yeah. So if they're yeah. just cruising by, can they just walk in and, and sit down for scones? No. How does that work? They can't. No. Um, if people that aren't staying here want to experience the breakfast, they can call us and book a private party. Yeah, they need Perfect. to have a reservation. Yeah. And we it. love to yeah. we love to fill our tables. So it's yeah. all based on availability. And if we have the availability, we welcome the locals to come and enjoy the experience. Um, and then we want them to send their family to stay with us. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they when they come to visit. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, we are so grateful to have had this experience here. Thank you so much for Thank serving you, Thanks, Sarah, for the idea. Yes. Thank you, Kate. Um And uh, we'll see you again soon. Good. 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 Let's go over to it. <laughs> Good. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Amazing. That was so much fun. <laughs> Rick and Tom are the best. Oh my gosh. Did you decide which scone was your favorite? Can we say it on camera? I don't know. <laughs> Just go ahead. You tell them which one did you like better. Tom's was my favorite. I like Rick's. Okay, Perfect. good. Okay. Phew. Hi. All right. It's we're be okay. So now you know what's good Cape Cod. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and also the bell to be notified next time we drop an episode. And if you're looking for more information about anything we talked about, you can go to our website, whatsgoodcc.com, and we'll have links to everything we talked about. Thanks. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>